Front Ocean's intel paid off. I tracked the pirate and access to an Navi computer. She tried to cover her tracks, but I broke the encryption. What did you find? She frequented a planet in the Outer Rim. I'm headed there now to do recon. Send the coordinates. I'll have a full division on standby if you acquire a visual on the target. <laughs> Greetings once again, Bucketheads, Mavar Tigar. Welcome to our 249th passionately pleading Pabu episode of Mandovision, and I am your host, Nargai Tom, and thank you so much for checking out our small, independent Star Wars podcast. We are so glad you're here. Reach out to us on the socials, you know where we are, we're at Mando underscore Vision on Twitter, aka X, and Instagram. Email the show, MandovisionTom at gmail.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and share this show with all the Mandalorians in your covert. All right, Bucketheads, we are back for the second installment, the second episode that was dropped last week, and we said it on the last show. Um, the, the tides have turned. We are in a very dark place with the Bad Batch, and this episode really helps cement that as we see... Uh, it's not, it's, it, you know, I was gonna, I was gonna say we see like the full weight of the empire come bearing down on on Pabu, but the, the the fact of the matter is that it's not the full weight of the empire. This is but a fraction of a fraction of what the empire can do. This is one ship <laughs> coming down to uh, uh, just instill fear and and, and uh, oppression <laughs> on, on this planet, and they barely had to do anything to do it. Um, but but underlining again that these are the dark times, right? This this is this is all the stuff that's fuel for the rebellion down the road, uh, and, and as we saw, it kind of culminating in in Andor, uh, when that aired. Gosh, it feels like forever ago that Andor was on. But you know we're we're seeing those things that that Luth and Raul is talking about in Andor, uh, in these these last few episodes. This episode in particular of the Bad Batch, as as the Empire just flexes its muscles and does what it wants. Uh, in, in, in his effort to uh, regain possession of Omega. So, yeah, a lot to get into in the episode. I don't see any reason why we need to wait and do any preambles because there's not a lot of new Star Wars news to discuss. So, hey, why not just get into the episode itself? It is a uh, action-packed episode of the show. Probably won't have a lot of dialogue. Uh, clips to play today, which that was, that's only good for the YouTube channel because then maybe they won't block the video. I, <laughs> we'll see. You know, it is what it is. Um, you know, the, the YouTube channel investment is not where I want it to be at the moment. We're hoping to, you know, really push that later in 2024 with some actual video-based content, but uh, that, that's all uh, speculative right now. So, uh, yeah, if, if you are a follower on YouTube, I do apologize when you're like, hey, what happened to this episode of the show? Uh, yeah, you'll probably need the podcast for that, my friends. I'm sorry. Uh, they are very strict on, on, on uh, the, the, share, the, the, the usage of, of the copyrighted materials, even though I've made it plainly clear that I, this is a not, not for profit operation. Anyways, let's, let's not go down that rabbit hole, my friends. All right, let's get into the particulars for this episode. This is Star Wars The Bad Batch, Season 3, Episode 11. Point of No Return, 
original air date April 3rd, 2024. Our uh, writer for this week, excuse me, this episode, uh, written by Amanda Rose Mon- Oh my goodness, I'm butchering your name. Written by Amanda Rose Munoz, directed by Nate Villanueva, our primary cast for this week. We got a bigger cast than last episode, that's for sure. D. Bradley Baker, Michelle Ang, Ben Diskin, Andy Allo, Daniel Logan, Max La- Matt Lanter, hello, Wanda Sykes, and Imari Williams this week are part of the are part of the cast. And our plot for this week's episode. The Empire closes in on the batch. And there it is, my friends. Uh, as you know, this episode, you know what? Oh, hold on. Let's just, you know what? No. No. We're going to do it. We're, we're, it's time to strap in. <laughs> we're going to talk about the episode on the other side of the bump. You ready? All right. Strap on your buckets. Let's go. <laughs> I wish you didn't have to leave. Me too. But Hunter thinks it's safer for everyone if we do. So there we have Omega and Liana talking to each other, uh, kind of confirming our suspicions as we are watching Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair load up mar- the Marauder, is that they are taking uh, uh, the advice that Asajj Ventures gave them to heart, that staying on Pabu is a dangerous, dangerous thing, and they're not nearly as safe as they think they are. Uh, but as we're going to find out in this episode, clearly, <laughs> clearly maybe it's a little too little too late on that situation. Uh, but let's go back to the beginning of the episode. We are following Fee and her ship Providence uh, as they they do a little docking just so they, they can you know they're stopping to get a refuel uh, for whatever their next adventure is going to be. It's Fee and her 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 uh, robot sidekick Max uh, out in the outer rim territories. Not quite sure where they're stopping at. I was unable to uh, ascertain that location. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, you'd think in Star Wars, when you go to, like, the gas station, and again, maybe this is just a me thing, but when I go to the gas station, if I'm going in to grab uh, a, a beverage and a couple of meat sticks, <laughs> I'm locking my car, man. I'm locking my car. I don't trust anybody. So the fact that Le- Fee just leaves her ship open like that you know, again, maybe, maybe you think you're at like some kind of private dock, but I don't trust anybody. And I would have my ship locked up tight. I don't care if I'm gone for two seconds, all right? That's not how I operate. And I'm, I'm surprised that that fee, a pirate herself, isn't more conscientious of spaceship security. And because, again, I mean, stealing a pirate ship, that's kind of funny, right? Like, you know, who's not going to try and steal a pirate ship if they get the opportunity to do so? It's a little surprised at at the uh, casualness with which Fee operates security when she's going to get a little beverage. Don't like it. But that allows the opportunity for CX-2 to sneak aboard her ship and access her Nava computer and kind of do like a little copy of it, right? Like he's got like the cool little copy copy rod thingamajigger that we see like R2-D2 has, but he has like his own version of it to retrieve that data pull it out of her Nava computer, and then he's going to load it up into his, right? And that's how he's going to ascertain the location of Pabu. And he's going to call it in, right? So he calls it in to Scorch, uh, our, our resident Imperial commando. Um, and, and again, it's not... This episode in particular adds, adds a lot of fuel to the fire that CX-2 is tech. And one of the first things that comes out of his mouth when communicating here with Scorch is that how Fee tried to cover her tracks, but he was able to break the the encryption. And again, it's not like Tech's the only guy around who can break encryptions, but it is something he was uh, especially good at. So there's there's another little nugget in the direction of CX2 being Tech. Uh, and there's another one later in the episode two that we will probably have an opportunity to discuss but again the the internet had a field day here uh with this episode and 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 sort of like the what what we are perceiving to be clues that this cx2 is in fact tech again it feels more and more inevitable as we build this build towards the finale of the season you know we we had sort of speculated maybe maybe they'd reintroduce a long lost clone like commander cody somebody like that as cx2 but it feels that that is not the direction they're going to go now and that it's it's has been and always will be tech moving forward uh and and we'll just have to wait for that heartbreaking reveal down the road because i'm sure that's what it's going to be because 
again, if there's one thing I'm picking up from these episodes right now is that the direction we're going, the track that we are on to the finale of this series, it's going to be it's going to be dark and it's going to be emotional. I get ready, bucketheads. Uh, uh, you know, stuff a little tissue in your helmet because <laughs> there may be some tears rolling by the end of this series. And um, the revelation of, of, of Tech SCX2 and what his role may be uh, as, in regards to Omega's fate, uh, that is all uh, interesting, interesting food for thought. Uh, if, you know, again, we don't want to speculate too, too much on, on what may happen here and there. But yeah, dark times are coming. And you think you think it's dark now? I just wait, and then yeah, like I said, I think the the narrative seems to be pointing us in the direction of the reveal that that CX two is tech, and it's going to be some sort of heartbreaking moment when it's revealed, and I am not looking forward to that already. <laughs> so, all right, so let's go ahead and get back to to the current uh, part of the episode, right? On Pabu, and again, we're talking about tech because uh, uh, they're in that that hall. Where the people who live on Pabu have put put the, like the valued treasures from their former lives, and now Omega is is placing Tech's uh, broken goggles there. You know, it, partially for safekeeping, but partially so that uh, he can be remembered uh, by, by the people of Pabu. And and as sort of as she says later in in the clip, uh, as a as sort of like a, something to come back for. And um, it's a nice moment. It's a really nice moment. And again, the the, the mention of Tech also kind of lends credence to the idea that, yes, in fact, CX2 is tech, because we're still just talking about tech a lot. <laughs> so there you go. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, more to come on Pabu, but it doesn't take long before CX2 is is on Pabu. Again, sneaking into, into this planet, not a big deal. Ventress just did it. No one seemed to take much, much alarm on that in- incident. So now CX2 does the same thing, parks in another sea cave, or perhaps even the same sea cave that Ventress parked in, and is now going to begin his infiltration and his his uh, observation of the colonnade here. And it doesn't take him long to suss out R- Wrecker, Crosshair, Hunter, and yes, indeed, Omega. And he does not hesitate to make the call, and the Empire answers that call. All right, let me, and also let me back up just a little bit here, because it's actually Liana who intimates that... Uh, the goggles are a reason for Omega to come back. And Omega doesn't answer that. It, she kind of keeps it like, mm, this might be the last time we're here as long as I'm wanted by the Empire. But she's not going to tell her friend that. Uh, and then meanwhile, again, it's a little bit more complicated than I let on. <laughs> Wrecker, the, the Marauder does detect uh, the CX-2 ship arriving, but he's not on the ship to answer it. He's in a, a, a argument with, uh, with Gonky. And so he misses it as the the alert uh, that the ship is, is is breaching the atmosphere, and then it goes stealth and va- va- vanishes from the scanners. So again, it's it's not as cut and dried as it was maybe at least appearance wise with with Ventress's uh, arrival on the planet. Uh, and again, if she arrives in the middle of the night, maybe that's why they miss it. They they never really elaborated on just how Ventress was able to get into the planet. We know that. CX2 has some kind of cloaking tech at, at his disposal, or at least an ability to jam sensors and communications. So that's that's mainly how he accesses it. But something's changed here on the planet, and and Hunter is seemingly very attuned to it. And again, this is a short clip, but uh, it's it's foreboding enough that I want to play it. What is it? Not sure. But I don't like it. Omega, time to go. Copy. So it's not quite the classic Star Wars, uh, I've got a bad feeling about this, but uh, it's pretty close, pretty close. All right, and I do want to go ahead and play the clip where CX2 calls it into Scorch because, uh, again, I just like it. (laughs) And uh, it, it sort of shows us the stakes here, right? Recover Omega, but what about those clones? Hmm. on the target. Grab them and wait for the division. She must be recovered unharmed. No mistakes this time. And the clowns she is with. If they get in your way, eliminate them. 
There you go. Harsh. Very, very harsh. And when he says ground them, yeah, they're going to blow up the Marauder. And it's going to take Wrecker out of action for this episode. Their strongest, physically strongest member of the team is about to be sidelined uh, as he is rendered unconscious from the explosion. And uh, his, his efforts to save Gonk, Gonky uh, as well. So, yes, so long, Marauder. We, uh, we, we hardly knew ye. Well, I mean, we knew you more than we knew the... Uh, some of the other ships in Star Wars lore, <laughs> but uh, they're they're very very cool ship. The Marauder is no more, and that is another sort of omen for things to come, I believe, with it, with this series. Uh, but it means it also means now that the batch is on high alert, but they are down a member already, and this is looking like a fight that they cannot win. <gasps> Rika, Rika, Oxen stack. Take Rika to ships. Deke. Get AZ-3 to patch him up, and fast! On it! Ships don't just blow up. We've been compromised. Everyone, get to cover! So yeah, there you have the moment here where the Empire arrives. And again, it's just a single ship now uh, in, in, in st stationed above the colonnade. And as Hunter <laughs> sees it, and that, that wonderful score by Kevin Kiner really kicks in and is just so reminiscent of, of Episode 3 in particular. Um, the sheer panic of the people, uh, of the, this, this symbol of, of oppression and tyranny, uh, now literally hangs above their head. It's it's a really cool moment as again for for fans like us who've been around for for a little while now, um, you know it makes the idea of the empire far less abstract and way more real. And that is um, again as as we're exploring this time period between episodes three and episodes four, you know, aka the dark times. Uh, it's it's really been uh, uh, nice to see that that. Star Wars, under Disney's direction, hasn't really shied away from kind of showing these more horrific elements of, of things. And again, it's not like horrifying in the way like, you know, we're not watching like Band of Brothers here. All right. It's not it's not that. But, you know, really just convincing us of the awfulness, the evilness of the Empire. You know, that's what I really wanted to see highlighted in this period, and I think they're doing a very effective job of that, uh, particularly in their efforts to hunt down a little girl. So think about that one, friends. Think about that one. And as the first ships land with the stormtroopers aboard, again, they're not even doing anything yet. They're just standing there, and the, the people of, of Pabu are running away. The CX-2 is walking through that crowd of, of, of people fleeing uh, to issue his orders to the troopers, and again, I just sort of like the way, the decisiveness, the 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 way in which he issues his commands. I'll just go ahead and play it. Cut off all the escape routes. Destroy any ships or sea skiffs in sight. Yes, sir. So again, the effort with which the Empire is is just taking to recover Omega, uh, it it's it's terrifying. <laughs> it it really really is. Um, and it, imagine being one of these people, and you've been living this, this peaceful life on this island, paradise, you know, thinking you're beneath the notice of the Empire, and then they come crashing down your door, and they're not even there for you. But still, utterly, utterly terrifying stuff. Uh, and again, I think they do a really nice job of, of, of convincing us of that, of, of showing those reactions, uh, and, and us being under, able to understand why they are fearful of their way of life possibly coming to an end here. Uh, I'd like, I do really like CX-2's decisiveness, uh, as I stated before, uh, and his determination to not fail again. Uh, it, you know, blow up the sea skips, any ships coming in, let's take them out. And we're going to see that later in the episode because, again, now that the batch is out of, you know, they're down a Marauder, they got to get off the planet. Their plan is to steal a ship. And it's, at a certain point, they're going to get to that. And... Instead of allowing the Bad Batch to steal the ship, CX-2 just blows the pilot's pilot away uh, to crash the ship so the hunter can't take it. Um, that cold ruthlessness that we're, we see on display now from CX-2, uh, pretty, pretty intense stuff. You know, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Let me go back to when they're fishing Wrecker out of the water here. 
Uh, and, and again, they showed him earlier in the episode, but really nice to see that, that Mox, Stack, and, and uh, Deke made it to Pabu and are now kind of trying to live their best lives. But it looks like, looks like they, didn't, they didn't get to have too much fun on Pabu before the Empire showed up to ruin their day as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what their role in the show is going forward, if there is, is more of, of those three. Uh, you would imagine that maybe now they're in the fight. Um, but we'll have to wait and see how that all shakes out because this episode ends with a lot of questions for us to try and, and uh, wait to get answers for for the next episode, which is conveniently very, very soon. So that's going to work out pretty nicely. But let's go ahead and, and, again, the hunt for Omega is on. The people of Pabu are running in the streets looking for safety anywhere they can. Uh, and the Bad Batch is doing their best to get away and off-world while still keeping the people of Pabu safe. And that is, uh, that's a lot of things they're trying to get accomplished here. Uh, and, and, and numbers are not on their side. This is all my fault. They're attacking because of me. It's the Empire's fault, not yours. You have to stay focused. They're destroying all means of escape and jamming our cops. We have to steal one of their gunships. Once we're out of range, we can contact Echo. I'll handle it. You two, get to ships and wait with Wrecker until I signal you. So the beginnings of a plan, but as I already told you, it's not going to work out too well, because as soon as Hunter gets himself in a position to take a gunship... Uh, the CX is going to decide that that's not happening and just shoots the pilot of said gunship to crash it into the ocean uh, and, and, in theory, uh, kill Hunter in the process. Uh, now I'm going to play the clip. This is the, next, this is the very next scene, but it's, it's the clip that kind of sent the Internet on fire, uh, set the Internet on fire, excuse me, uh, when CX2 utters a specific word in, in his issuing of orders here. And again, it's not a long clip, but... I'm going to let it play out because it leads into a conversation here. Uh, uh, you know, Shep coming to sort of um, – what's the word I want to use here? I don't know. <laughs> it's, stand up for his people, I suppose, is the best way to put it. Uh, and, and CX is, is – he's going to lay it down. Lock down the town. Search every domicile until you find her. So I'll pause it right there because – Domicile is the word that caught the interest of the internet uh, because tech uses this word. It's a very distinct word. And tech uses it back, I believe, in season two. And yeah, sure. You know, I'm already on, on board with the whole uh, uh, tech is CX2. So sure, another clue. Why not? Let's go for it. Now we'll go ahead and play the rest of the clip. This is when Shep arrives to, to sort of defend uh, his people and Pabu. What do you think you're doing? Who are you? The mayor of this town. You've opened fire on my village and its people without warning and without reason. Under what pretense are you attacking? We are here to collect a fugitive you've been harboring. You can't just barge in here. I've barely done anything yet. You've destroyed our docks and fishing skiffs, our livelihood. I have simply cut off a means of escape, but I can do worse. I know the girl is here. Until she's turned over to me, your island will burn. Man, oh man, you gotta absolutely love the scoring on this episode. The music in here is just freaking fire. It's so good. And just, just, when you rewatch it, just listen. You're gonna love it. It's chills down the spine. So the next chunk of the episode is very action-packed, very uh, 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 intense, if you will. It's Hunter trying to steal the gunship, as we talked about. And just as he's getting close to succeeding, uh, <laughs> CX2 just very coldly, calculatedly uh, shoots the pilot to crash the ship so the hunter can't take it. Uh, but before that even, after they get to Liana and Wrecker, uh, Crosshair and Omega go out to sort of survey the village and what's going on around them. And what they see is... Imperial troopers moving throughout the, throughout the village, throughout the town, going door to door, throwing citizens out of their homes, doing whatever they want in their search for Omega. Uh, and you can tell, you can tell that it's, it's gutting her deeply to see these people who uh, she cares for uh, uh, have their lives disrupted for her. And, you know, we, we don't quite get to the, the neighbor turning on neighbor to, to, rat out Omega like we saw in last week's episode uh, where uh, where the Aqualish rats out the, the neighbor 
uh, and his baby, the baby gets abducted uh, because of said neighbor rat and turning on neighbor. Um, but you sort of wonder if uh, maybe the episode had gotten gone a little bit longer, if maybe it would have gotten to that point where, you know, Shep has to make a decision here to save his people and by doing so, you know, turns over Omega. It doesn't come to that. Luckily, you know, like the, the people of Pabu are sort of, and Shep in particular, as the leader of these people, are, are sort of able to keep their integrity um, <clears throat> because Omega makes the decision for them. And let's hear her, hear her sort of rationalize this whole thing to Crosshair. And, and again, Omega comes up with a plan, but woo, I think Crosshair says a lot of variables here. What do we do? Troopers will be here soon. Hunter would want us to stick to the plan. There's no hiding cross here. The Empire knows I'm here. They won't stop searching until they find me. Our only choice is to let them capture me. What? Look at what they've already done. I can't let the people here suffer more because of me. You'll be taken back to Tantus. Exactly. We've been trying to find those coordinates and nothing's worked. But if I keep my comm on me and turn myself over, you can track me to Tantus. This is our chance. Our chance to finally rescue the clones imprisoned there. No, they'll search you and find it. It won't work. Well then shoot a secondary tracker onto the ship that they take me away on. Too many unknown variables. It's not a viable plan. It's all we've got. And it's my choice. Omega. Focus on the bigger mission, Crosshair. I'm just a small part of it. So she convinces him. <laughs> it looks like they're in for a penny, in for a pound on this plan. Uh, that Crosser accurately says has way too many unknown variables here. I would not be comfortable with this at all. But they're going to give it a shot. And it seems to be going the way they need it to. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and just play it. Uh, let, let me cue up the scene here where Omega turns herself over to CX2. All right, so here we are. The Imperial forces are still rounding up the villagers of Pabu, uh, getting ready to torch their homes. And this is when Omega decides that she's seen enough and it's time to stop this. Stop. I surrender. Stay alert. I neutralized the other two clones with her, but not the third. Take me and leave the island alone. The people here are innocent. Then you never should have come here in the first place. I, I sort of love CX2 and just how cold and brutal he is with his with his spitting facts over here. Uh, he does have Omega scanned for tracking devices. They find it. They eliminate it. It's not going to be a problem anymore. But again, Omega's still got this plan in, the, in her back pocket here that Crosshair is going to make the shot. Plus secondary tracking device on the ship that they're going to take her away on. But it's action from here on out. Hunter's going to get back to shore, come across Batcher, who was chased off by the Imperials earlier as, as he... Batcher was not a fan of the Empire's bullying, uh, but has been, we sort of wondered Batcher's status. Batcher f finds Hunter on the shore. Meanwhile, Crosshair is attempting to make, to get that secondary tracker onto the ship that's going to be taking Omega back to Tantus, but he comes across a Kadir of stormtroopers who are not having any fun with that idea, and they don't know that he's trying to do it, but it, it, it's enough of a distraction that Crosshair has to deal with them uh, before he's able to get in a position to take the shot. And so by the time the stormtroopers are uh, uh, dealt with, we'll just go with that word, uh, Crosshair has to run and, and, and attempt to make the shot just before the ship pulls away, and he misses. And it's so, so heartbreaking <laughs> that you're like, oh, no. That's not going to be good for anyone. And again, we wonder, does he miss the shot because of the, uh, the obviously the huge delay that he had to incur uh, dealing with the stormtroopers put him in a bad spot, but does he miss miss or does the ship pull away before his, ship, before his shot can land safely? Uh, there's been some debate on this online. I don't really know. I, I think Crosshair would have made this shot uh, had the ship not pulled away, but... 
I guess that is to be determined. Do you guys have a different take on that on that scene and how it looked to you? Does does he miss the shot? Does he does that hand twitching not work out so well for him? Uh, like I said, I think the ship pulls away, and and so the the loss of time is why he misses the shot. But it doesn't it doesn't under it doesn't um <laughs> it's it's still just absolutely heartbreaking that he misses that shot as that ship goes away and Omega is being returned to Tantus with the hope that he makes that shot and that Clone Force 99 will be in hot pursuit and they'll know the location of Tantus and they'll be able to rescue all those clones. Uh, Again, Omega is this character that embodies hope and hopefulness. And now it seems that, again, hope is lost because the Bad Batch will not be able to pursue. They will not be able to track her to Tantus. So hope is lost. (laughs) <laughs> if Omega is hope, and now she is lost. There, I don't know how, how more else I can spell it out for everybody. Probably a little two on the head for y'all. Sorry. Anyways. But it puts us in a bit of a predicament here for the next installment because we're back to where we started the season. Clone Force 99 doesn't know where Tantus is, doesn't know how to get to Tantus. They are back to where they started. And Omega is back to being a prisoner with uh, little hope of rescue because... Again, I think it's at a certain point she's going to realize that tracker didn't didn't make it on there for whatever reason. Uh, so we have a lot of things to look forward to. We have a lot of things to try and figure out. What I what my big takeaway from this this all is is like yes, we're you know Clone Force Ninety Nine is back to square one like they were in the first episode of this season, trying to figure out where Tantus is. But one big difference is they have Crosshair that they didn't have who they didn't have with them. When this season began, and I think that uh, the, this bond that he has forged with with Omega in these last these over the course of this season uh, is is really going to come in handy here because uh, Crosshair doesn't play nice. Hunter and Wrecker are are no joke, but but Crosshair is legit terrifying when he wants to be, and I think the idea that uh, Crosshair is now lost, you know, essentially his best friend. <laughs> the best friend he's ever had. Uh, I think that's going to put him on a path uh, where he will do whatever it takes to get her back. And what having Crosshair with them also means is they have Crosshair's imperial knowledge now on their side too. Like Crosshair may know where he needs to go to get the information that they need. Maybe I'm reading into that a little bit. I don't know for sure, but Again, having Crosshair with them this time around, I think, is going to help turn the tides a bit uh, as far as getting that information. And again, they, it's only a matter of time like, where they're going to link up with with Echo, and they're going to link up with Rex and the rest of the, uh, the the Clone Army Underground Railroad that's going on there. Because, again, this is more than about Omega. It's about rescuing the clones that are being experimented on uh, at Tantus. So... I, I think we're going to be building towards something really, really big and epic here, and I cannot wait to see how it all shakes out. This is nine buckets, nine buckets of awesomeness, awesomeness and heartache. <laughs> That's what this episode is nine buckets of, my friends, and I, I, I cannot wait uh, for the next installment this week. It's going to be just a really, really good time. Nine buckets of awesomeness and heartache. So we've got four episodes left of the series, and a lot has to happen in the meantime. And I can't wait to see where where it all goes and how it all finishes up here. But like I said earlier, uh, get those tissues in your buckets, my friends. We're gonna need it. <laughs> it's gonna be oh, it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> uh, and from here on out, it's weekly. It's one episode a week from here on out for the for the remainder of the season. So. Um, that's going to make things tantalizingly agonizing <laughs> in, in a lot of ways as we wait for these final four episodes and to kind of see how everything uh, comes to a head here. And that is going to be the podcast for this week, friends. Uh, remember, this is the Men Division Podcast. I am your host, Nargai Tom. Thank you so much for checking out our small independent Star Wars podcast. We really, really appreciate you guys taking the time and effort to find us and to listen to us and to share the show with your friends and members of your uh, Mandalorian covert. (laughs) 
I really, I'm, I'm really stumbling over my, my closing here. Sorry, friends. Uh, reach out to us on the socials, though. We're at Mando underscore Vision on Twitter slash X and Instagram. Email the show, MandoVisionTom at gmail.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and share this show with all the Mandalorians in your covert. I did it right that time. If your podcasting platform allows it, sweet, sweet, sweet five-star reviews really help the show out tremendously, and we truly, truly appreciate it. All right, Bucketheads, go out there. Be great Star Wars fans. Get them hyped up because what's coming down the road looks awesome. It's going to be awesome. And you guys take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll be back next week to discuss more Star Wars The Bad Batch. But remember, this podcast can only end one way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. way.